all of you on this beautiful Palm Passion Sunday. Those who are out there in you know, Facebook Live land, extra special blessings to you. A couple of announcements as we gather in the name of Christ. This is the beginning of Holy Week for us here at Christ the King, and there are so many things that I'd love for you to partake in. As we change uh, the way we do things around here, all of these things are going to be happening online, and there are some wonderful things, uh, such as kids' time with me tomorrow and prayer time. Um, and then on Wednesday, I invite you to be a part of Godly Play. We had it on Friday, and it will be a blessing this Wednesday with Mrs. Kathy Ham at 10 o'clock. We have Bible studies, and then we have um, the three days. We have Monday, Thursday, we have worship at 7. Good Friday, we have worship at 7. And then normally we do an Easter vigil. Um, but this year, uh, due to circumstances, we are changing things. And uh, please join me for an Easter vigil reflection time. So that'll be with me at 7 o'clock. And then as uh, on Sunday morning at Easter, we are going to uh, you know, celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior at 9.30 through word, through song, through celebration. So welcome. Welcome to all of you. If you'd like to partake on a regular basis with what we do here, um, as far as worship, um, I usually give out an order of worship to all those who are interested. So if you'd like one, please uh, message me. Um, you can either do that through Facebook or you know, email or what have you. I'd be happy to send it to you. So without further ado, let us uh, gather in song as we sing the King of Glory. Thank you. 
opportunities for good. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The one we have long awaited, the Messiah has come, Hosanna. Riding into Jerusalem, not on a war horse, but on a young donkey. Hosanna, the Prince of Peace has come, the one who heals our wounds. Hosanna, everything that was foretold, Christ has fulfilled. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We set up a banquet and pour costly perfume at his feet. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is Jesus, whose name is glorified. This is Jesus, high and lifted up. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us sing all glory, loud, and honor.
Let's have a moment of silence for reflection and self-examination. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you, knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits, that we may find that what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. We hear God's good news for us this day and every day. Receive good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, says our God. All our sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. The Lord be with you. Yes, so with you. I invite you to pray with me this day. Gracious and wondrous God, this day is filled with various different symbols, but one in particular of life, celebration, death, and remembrance. As we start this journey to the cross, remind us that resurrection is always possible, that resurrection will always happen. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our celebration hymn of Hosanna, Praise is Rising. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, 
that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I, will, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall, I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will, will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to was bleeding from the breathing that was strong. 
stripes upon his back, and wore a crown of thorns upon his head. Judas, who betrayed him, said, 
Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You all become, des you all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. And Peter said to him, Though all become des deserters because of you, I will never desert you. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you this very night before the cock rows, you will deny me three times. And Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to the place called Gethsemane. And he said to the disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, so you could not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, this cannot pass unless I drink it. Your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words, and he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with him. It was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the, the betrayer had given them a sign saying, The one I will kiss is the man, arrest him. And once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you do, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hands on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave on the high of the high priest, cutting off his ear. And Jesus said, "Go put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how, then, would the scriptures be fulfilled? Which say, it must happen in this way. At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as if I were abandoned? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all of this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. And all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for a false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last two came forward and they said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to them, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus said to him, You have said so. 
But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power, coming on the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his clothes and said, He is blasphemed! Why do you still need witnesses? You have heard now his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. And they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A serving girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilee. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another serving girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know of the man. After a little while, the bystander came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. And he began to curse, and he swore, no, I do not know the man. And at that moment, the cock crowed. And then Peter remembered what Jesus had said before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he wept out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. He said to them, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the silver pieces, said, it, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used him to buy the potter's field as a place to bury the foreigners. For the reason that the field has been called the field of blood to this day, then was fulfilled what had been spoken with the prophet Jeremiah. And they took thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom the price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge. So that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner to the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. And at that time, they had a prisoner notorious, called Jesus Barabbas. So they, after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who was called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, The Lord said it was Jesus who was called Messiah. And all of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe upon him. And after twisting some thorns into a crowd, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand, and they knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. And they led him away 
to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and the elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. It was about three o'clock, and Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemme sabachthani, that is my God. My God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge filled with sour wine, put it on the stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait! Let us see you, whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. And at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with them who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from some distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in clean linen cloth and laid him in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what the imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, I command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people. He has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Let us have a moment of silence.
Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Hear these words from John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I've often pondered that verse. What exactly does it mean? I think it is easy for us to keep it simple and just say, well, Jesus is all of those things and just leave our answer on the wayside. Jesus is the answer on to the next subject. Yet as I mentioned, I can't help but want, I can't help but ponder this particular verse. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Now the word suggests many things. Now this word way suggests this, that Jesus is the direction that I must follow. He gives me direction and instruction. I have no problem with that particular word. The word life. I get the fact that Jesus fills me with so many different kinds of life. He fills my faith. He fills my daily routine with the, the, the ability to breathe, to breathe in his love for me on a regular basis. Yet that word truth, that word truth, I struggle with that word, and I'm sure you do too. Are we talking about God's truths? Are we talking about my personal truths, someone else's truths? Is a truth a fact or something that I should wonder or in the process, maybe like a parable? Honestly, I'm not really sure what a truth is, let alone the truths that God, through his only begotten Son, places before me. Take our scripture that we just read for today. Jesus came into Jerusalem, heralded as a king with palm branches and coats thrown before him, and the people shouted with words of excitement, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now at first glance, we would assume that the truth that the people believed in was that the king that Jesus was the king, and he had come to claim his rightful place on his throne, upon the throne of David, and unite the peoples under one banner. However, as Easter people, we know the truth that Jesus came to die when he came to Jerusalem. He knew the truth about people who shouted, for their shouts of joy at one time soon became shouts of death. Crucify him! Crucify him! And crucify him they did. Pounding nails over and over again into his sinless body. And they lift them up on an instrument of torture called a cross for all to see. Another truth. We have crucified your king. How can he be the way, the truth, and the life? How can he be the truth as we lay him into a tomb? The story ends. There is no more. Those who followed him certainly believed in this particular truth, so much so they accepted this truth as the next story they had to deal with or understand. Their supposed Savior had reached his finality. There was nothing more of Jesus. So now what? So now what? Is that the truth? So one thing for sure, it causes me to ponder especially nowadays. I can't help but see the parallels to Jesus' story to the cross and our truths that we are facing every day. Right now, there are plenty of truths that are swirling about. Many of them, I honestly, I try to ignore them. Yet the truth of the world is this, that we are facing suffering. We are facing mourning, displacement, awkwardness, fear, anxiety, and far too many deaths. While Jesus knew his task, we 
we didn't. Yet the emptiness, the outrage, and the ache is still the same. Yet the truth I believe, the truth that I believe is what do we do with what's next? As I mentioned before, we can certainly say that Jesus is the answer and just, well, that's the easy solution. We just leave it on the wayside and then move on from there. But let's face some facts. Moving on from there is never the answer. Needing Jesus as our Lord and Savior in the reality, in our reality, in those realities that we are experiencing more than ever, we need Jesus. We need his way. We need his life so that we can see his truth. And there's more to be given to us for our life. So we need his way, his life, his truth so we can see what's more. And that thing is called resurrection. Newness of life. But this one truth, by this one truth, it gives us that one thing that we can hope on. That one thing that we can hope in. As much as the world seems to crack and crumble, the page of the story always turns. The computer, put it in today's context, always resets. Ready to prove to us that the realities that we trudge through are never the ending points that we should trust in, but rather we should trust in the truth that God has given to us that through the cross, in a tomb, and then out again, brings us certainty, brings us truth, brings us life that is everlasting and that is never disappointing. So the truth in Jesus is this. By his words, by his healing, by his sacrifice, by his death and his life, that's all we need. Cling on to that. That is our truth. Amen. Let's have a moment of silence. Let us now confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. And so we confess, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite you to pray with me this day. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond by saying, hear our prayer. Let us pray. 
trusting our hearts to God who is gracious and merciful. We pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O God of mercy, awaken your church to new proclamations of your faithfulness. By your spirit, give us bold and joyful words to speak that we sustain the weary with the message of your redemption. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. O God of mercy, quiet the earth where it trembles and shakes. Protect vulnerable ecosystems, threatened habitats, endangered species. Prosper the work of scientists, engineers, and researchers who find ways to restore creation to health and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. God of mercy, drive away fear and anger that causes us to turn against one another. Give courage to leaders who seek liberation for the oppressed. Bring peace and hope to those who are in prison and those who face execution. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. God of mercy, send your saving help for all who suffer abuse, insult, discrimination or contempt. Heal the wounded, comfort the dying. Bring peace to those suffering chronic or terminal illness. Tend to all who cry out for relief, especially those we name before you now. So people of God, we lift up to you all those who are on our ongoing prayer list. Today, specifically, we ask your blessings on Doug Spaulding and Lisa Coger, Eleanor Mangus, Sarah Miller, be with Joseph Leotini, continue to bring healing to Vi Malone, who's doing quite well. We give you thanks and praise for how well Marcy Barnum's surgery went well, how that went, excuse me. Please be with Tim Horner, be with Anita Engel, be with Steve Thompson, be with Cheryl Rea, Phil Gimmer. We ask your blessings upon those, your healing touch upon those who are going through too much because of this COVID-19 virus. Please be with our nurses and doctors who are on the front line making sure that everyone is healthy. Be also with those who are serving, well, essentials out there. Lord, we need your healing in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Well, God of mercy, we ask your blessings upon this Church of Christ the King. Things are different. Please, O oh God, we ask your blessing upon all of us as we proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ in our homes, those who well, may need to hear from us on maybe through some kind of communication. Give us your words, O oh God. But also we ask your blessings on this church that we may continue to be a place of solace and grace for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Well, God of mercy, when we breathe our last, you raise us to eternal life with all your witnesses in heaven and on earth. Let us boldly confess the name of Jesus Christ, our resurrection and our hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, hear these and all of our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. The peace of Christ be with you always and, and also, also with you. you. At this time, if you would like to share that peace with your loved ones, um, and if you're just there by yourself, please go outside while it's raining and shout it from the mountaintops, Peace be with you! And hear what you have to say. <laughs> so may God's blessings be with you. At this particular time is usually when we celebrate our offering, where we remember and give of our, our 
gifts, uh, the things that God has blessed us with, uh, in return to how God has, in return to what God has done for us. I encourage you to please continue to give to your church to support the ministries that are ongoing. And I also want to say thank you to all of you who have, all, who have been, been giving at this point. Thank you so very much. Remember, God has blessed you with many things. Show that uh, same giving in return. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on the tree of the cross gave salvation to all, that where death began, their life might be restored. And that he who by a tree once overcame might be a tree overcome. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their ending hymn saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna! Hosanna. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, in the beginning you formed the heavens and earth and created us in your likeness. You made us guardians of your good creation and left the earth in our care. All through our weary years and our silent tears, you did not abandon us to ourselves, but sought us out in love. When we were captive in Egypt, you did not abandon us. When we wandered in the wilderness, you did not abandon us. When we turned to false gods, you did not abandon us. When we were broken, you did not abandon us. Through our holy prophets, you called us to return to your graciousness, to your mercy, and to your steadfast love. In the crowning act of love, you gave your only Son, that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. For you sent Jesus not to condemn the world, but to save the world from sin. Through his death on the cross, we who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior took bread, and he blessed it and broke it, and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, broken and given for you. He also took the cup and gave it to all the trees, saying, This cup is the covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, saying, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, remember Christ's life among us, his association with outcasts, his eating with sinners, his healing of the sick, his care for the poor. Send, we pray, your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and wine that we who share this meal may become a holy communion, the body of Christ in the world, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God's love is poured out in Christ for you. Open yourselves to receive it. It's the body of Christ broken and given for me, the blood of Christ shed for me.
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now receive God's blessings this day. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and in peace. Amen. Let us sing our sending hymn. God.